In this video, I'm going to go over how to use subcontracting. We have inventory, manufacturing, sales, and purchasing installed. The first thing you want to do is enable subcontracting by going to manufacturing, configuration settings, and turn on subcontracting. In our inventory app, we also want to turn on multi-step routes. It makes things easier so we can see all of our routes. So now we want to, we'll explain the use case first. So let's say there's several use cases for subcontracting, but let's say there's two essential ones. One is you manufacture a product, and then at the end of the manufacturing process, you perform another action that is subcontracted out to um, one of your vendors that performs some work on that product and returns it as a, another product. So we might have a metal plate that goes and gets, or, or a piece of metal that goes and gets plated and comes back to us as a plated metal box or whatever item you're trying to produce. The other use case is you simply subcontract items out to your vendor uh, when someone orders it from your company. So the one we're gonna walk through today is manufacturing a product. So if we go to our product, we have a metal shield that we're going to manufacture. And we can sometimes sell metal shields by themselves, or we can other times sell metal plated shield or plated metal shield. If we look at our metal shield, we have a build material, and that build material uses sheet metal, so two square feet of sheet metal, in order to produce a metal shield. And then we have our sheet metal, which is just some raw material. And we have our plated metal shield. And we'll go into how this is set up in just a moment. When we activated subcontracting, it created a new operation type. that is is resupply subcontractor. <clears throat> and it also created some routes for us. And those routes are resupply subcontractor and resupply subcontractor on order. Very similar routes. The resupply subcontractor just applies to an entire warehouse. And you'll see that the rule here is when products are needed in our physical location slash subcontracting location, so that operation type that I just showed you, it's going to create a record in that operation type to pull it from our warehouse stock. Now our resupply subcontractor on order simply says we can apply this to products and when products are needed in our production environment, so our virtual location production where our work is happening, pull it from our physical location slash subcontracting location. And if we don't have those products, it's going to trigger another rule to fulfill those items. Now that we have our route set up, and these are all default routes out of the box, we also on archive replenish on order. So if you go to filters archived, we on archived replenish on order, which essentially allows us to purchase an item when a purchase or manufacture an item at the time of sale. So once we click confirm on a sales order, it automatically generates those items needed or the records for those items needed. So now let's go back to our products. In our sales scenario, we're going to sell one plated metal shield. That plated metal shield if we click into the product and go to our inventory, we can look at the routes. We simply buy the plated metal shield and it has MTO because when someone orders this, we're going to automatically create that purchase order for the plated metal shield. This plated metal shield also has a bill of material attached to it. And this bill of material simply states that it's a subcontracted product. So for our subcontracted bill material gets triggered 
and it consumes our metal shield. So what essentially happens is we send our metal shield to our subcontractor, which in return sends us a plated metal shield. And the routes get a little bit confusing to follow, but it's very logical if you think through it. If we look at our metal shield, we have replenish on order. So if someone orders this product, we're going to make it. We manufacture this product in-house. So we have the manufacturing route selected. And any component that is used in a subcontracted build material, we need to apply the resupply subcontractor on order route. So whatever products would be in this build material for the plated metal shield, all those components must have that route applied. So now let's think through the steps. What we're gonna do in the sales order is sell one plated metal shield. Because it's MTO, it's gonna automatically create a purchase order because we buy this product. So essentially we buy a service and in return, we get a plated metal shield. So a couple of things have to happen there. If we go to our overview, in order for us to have our first plated or our on plated metal shield, we need to manufacture it. And then once we manufacture that product, we need to resupply our subcontractor so that we can send out our product to the subcontractor and then they can send it back and once they send it back, we'll confirm it in a receipt. And then finally, we'll be able to deliver it to the end customer. So let's purchase one and walk through that use case. So we'll create a new sales order for a customer. And we'll add our plated metal shield. Keep in mind, we have the raw components currently in stock for our metal shield. So let's confirm this and you'll see one delivery and one purchase was created. And this delivery order is gonna go right out to the customer. It is not available. You'll see it's waiting another operation. You see that plated metal shield, not available, not reserved. We also created a purchase order because we essentially buy this product. Now let's go to our inventory app. You'll see all we have here is the delivery order to the customer. Nothing else was created yet. Once we confirm this purchase order, that we're going to purchase this service from our vendor, or we're gonna purchase the plated metal shield, it's gonna create several more operations. So we have resupply. So this is going to resupply our subcontractor and this receipt in order to receive the product back from our subcontractor. Now, if we go into our inventory overview again, you'll see three new records. We have resupply subcontractor, a receipt, and manufacturing. Now, I'll start with resupply. The resupply is telling us that we need to send the subcontractor the components in that build material that we created that was the subcontracted build material, which is a metal shield. And that metal shield we don't currently have in stock because it's also a made to order product. So when we selected made to order, since this product is needed in resupply subcontractor, it automatically creates a manufacturing order to produce that product. Now you'll notice that delivery order is still pending, of course. And one thing I wanna point out is this receipt. So the, the receipt says one to process, you might find that weird that it doesn't say it's waiting for another operation. And this is a physical limitation. So there's no way you can receive a good without having the good. So the fact that it says one, the process shouldn't, you shouldn't worry about um, all receipts. If you have the physical goods, you can process it regardless of anything else that's going on in your system. So that's why it's ready to process, even though we have not set, sent out the products to get resupplied yet. Now let's go to manufacturing and manufacture, manufacture the metal shield. So that's the base product. So we can just mark this as done. You might have a whole manufacturing process set up for this. 
now that this manufacturing process is done, you can see the resupply subcontractor. So here we want to send out our product to our subcontractor to get plated. So now that's going out to the subcontractor to get plated. And now once they send it back to us, we can receive it back into our from our receipts operation site. And you'll see that we're returning or we receive back a plated metal shield. So now let's validate. And you'll see the components that were consumed in exchange for this plated metal shield. Sorry, if we click into register components. So these are the components that were registered or consumed in order to receive those products from our vendor. So now we have our final plated metal shield in stock and we have the delivery order that goes out to our customer. And that is the entire process of subcontracting. Like I said, there's times where we'd skip that manufacturing part and just simply subcontract a product to our vendor and we get it back and send it to our customer. But I wanted to walk through the little bit more complicated use case.